Okay, well, if you've seen my other two oil level videos, um, you know that I prefer to have the oil level about three quarters of the way between the two dots. Um, this one is going to be right about at the full mark. Um, so, I'm going to say that this one is good enough. It's not exactly where I would prefer it to be, but um, I don't want to be a nuisance to the guys at the dealership who seem to be doing an excellent job of accommodating my requests. Okay, let's go ahead and pull the dipstick out. Then I'm going to do some talking while the dipstick is out. Okay. So you can see that right now it looks like the oil level is somewhere between the top dot and the F mark. Actually, it looks like it's right about at that top dot. So I'll go ahead and I'll clean this off so we can take our real reading. But before we take that real reading, um, I'm going to leave the dipstick sit here while I talk for about 10 minutes. Um, part of the reason why I'm choosing to not make a big deal out of the fact that the oil level isn't between the two dots. It's closer to the top dot. You know, it's like right on the top dot. Part of the reason why I'm choosing to not make a big deal of that is because um, um, the service team there, the service writer, the service manager, um, the mechanics, they all seem to be doing what they can to accommodate my requests. And some of my requests require either deviating from the norm or taking extra time, actually both, take, but taking extra time to do the things that I'm requesting. For instance, when, when mechanics fill oil, they usually do it from a chart. Um, for instance, this Kia Soul, um, the 2014 Kia Soul, I believe, has two engine options on it. It's got, I think, a 1.6 and maybe a 2.0 and the amount of oil that goes in those engines might possibly be different and to expect that the um, technician would have memorized all of the quantities of oil that go into each of the different engines of each of the different makes I'm sorry of each of the different models um, at a dealership or of each of the different makes at a general service station would be a lot to ask of the technicians. So those technicians tend to use charts and most of the time they don't modify those charts. They just use what it says in the chart. For instance, if you look at your owner's manual, in fact, why don't I get the owner's manual right now? Okay, so I, I just went into the glove compartment. I put the camera on pause and I got this um, owner's manual out. And you can see it's got this chart, this volume chart, um, where it says for a 1.6 liter, if you're doing a drain and fill, um, hmm, it doesn't say that you're re replacing the filter there. None of this says anything about replacing the filter, but they're saying, see, you've got this chart that says, if you're doing a drain and fill, then you, for a 1.6 liter engine, you would put 3.8 quarts. Or for a 2.0 liter engine, you would put 4.23 quarts. Well, that's, that's an example of a chart that technicians frequently use. Um, 
when they do oil and filter changes. And it saves a great deal of time so that you don't, because the, the oil dispenser has a little counter on it that counts how many quarts or how many fractions of a quart are going into the engine during the oil and filter change. And that's a lot easier, a lot quicker than putting the dipstick in, pulling it out, reading it, adjusting the oil level, putting the dipstick back in again, waiting, the, waiting a sufficient amount of time for everything to um, make it down into the oil pan and then pulling it back out again and checking it and maybe doing that a third time even. Um, and my, my requests are requiring that kind of work be done at least once so that they can either modify the chart that they're using or um, um, you know so that they, they don't have to pull the dipstick out every single oil fill to um, check at what level has it been filled to at this point in time um, and then make modifications from there instead if they just modify the chart once um, if they take the time to make that modification but almost nobody um, ever goes and takes the time to make those modifications to the chart personally I think that those modifications are worthwhile to make um, one and here's an example of why I think it's it's worthwhile to modify charts um, on my Nissan cube I believe the the torque spec for the lug nuts was 80 foot pounds and I remember back to when I was an apprentice at the dealership and um, the, the journeymen were upset that I was using a torque wrench to torque everything instead of just hitting it with the impact wrench and being done with it and what I found years after I left the um, dealerships and was just working on my own car, maintaining my own car, was that one of the journeymen who pulled me to the side and explained to me, he said, Frank, you know, I know you were taught to use the torque wrench on everything, including lug nuts. And I'm going to tell you right now that if you torque those lug nuts to the specification that the dealer, that the service manual recommends, that car is going to come back with a complaint because those lug nuts will work themselves loose. If you hit it with the impact wrench, it tightens in a different manner and it's not going to work itself loose. Well, I kind of didn't believe him. He, he was convincing in how he said it. It seemed like he was a, a technician who truly cared about quality work and that he had been burned by having been in the same position I was in of torquing everything to the spec that's specified. And I think even if you, if you consider that torque wrenches might be a little bit, you know, not always torque, they don't always, hmm, they might be a little miscalibrated. Um, um, even if you take that into consideration, I think what he said was, was true, that the torque spec would result in lug nuts that work themselves loose and what I decided to do from that point was to modify what torque I torque it to. In other words, his recommendation was hit it with the impact wrench where you really don't have a very precise idea as to how tight you've made it. And what I said was instead of going that route, I'm going to tighten things a little bit tighter, like maybe 5% tighter than what the recommendation is. And on lug nuts. I, I wouldn't try to do that with like an intake manifold, but um, on lug nuts I found that it was worthwhile. In other words, the 80, the 80 foot pound recommend, recommendation for a lug nut, I ended up torquing it to 83 or 84 foot pounds, and I found that that does hold the lug nuts. Now, because I do deliveries, I'm in, for my income, I'm, I've kind of been in a, in a unique situation that most mechanics don't find themselves in. Most mechanics drive their vehicle to work and drive it back home at the end of the day, whereas I spent my day out on the road 
testing out the various things that I tried on my car. And I, so I kind of had a luxury in that way that most mechanics don't have. And I was surprised. It, it took me by surprise when I went to change my tires from summer tire, from all season tires to winter tires. And I found that sure enough, my lug nuts had worked themselves loose, um, just like the journeyman had said they would do. And um, so that's when I decided that I would add an extra 5% onto the recommendation. And I happen to notice that at Discount Tire, um, they've modified their torque specs, at least on the Nissan Cube, um, to, re to recommend tightening it not at 80 foot-pounds, but instead at 85 foot-pounds. So at Discount Tire, they seem to be using the same rationale that I used in modifying my chart. The reason I'm mentioning all this is because you're going to see here that my oil level is is considerably higher than the three-quarter mark. Um, my oil level is going to end up being considerably higher than the three-quarter mark, which I prefer, and yet I'm not complaining about that. And part of the reason is because the team over at the dealership, where I'm taking my car to have it ma maintained, um, seems to be working on... They seem to be accommodating my unusual requests, even though that causes them to spend more time on my vehicle. For instance, um, well, one of the things that they did good when I had this oil changed, I had a nail in my tire. They pulled that nail out. They um, patched the tire. They rebalanced. They did all that. I feel it was at a, at a very reasonable rate that they did it. Um, um, so that's one thing that they did excellent. You know, um, then I also have the request that my tire pressure, instead of being at the 33 foot pounds, I'm sorry, 33 pounds per square inch, that the sticker on the door jam recommends, um, I requested, can you please, you know, would you mind keeping the the air pressure closer to 38 um, pounds per square inch, and they accommodated that. I went around and I checked them. I think that tire is at 37 PSI. The one in the back is at 36 and a half. This one's at 36 and a quarter. And the one in the other rear is 36 and I think 36 even. Um, but when you take into consideration the difference in temperature for, you know, the car's in a, in a relatively cold environment here and it was in a warmer environment in the shop, that can, account, that can account for some of the difference. So I, I'm not going to complain about one or two PSI difference, especially when I'm requesting something unusual and they're accommodating that. Um, well, the oil level is something unusual that they're accommodating. And um, they seem to be working towards accommodating my request that the oil level be three quarters of the way between these two dots. Um, on this particular oil change, as we'll see, it's, it's really close to that dot by the F mark. It's, it's, not, it's not up to the F mark. I'm sorry, it's not up to the F, so it's between the dot and the F. Whereas on my first oil change, it had been above the F. But the point that I'm trying to get at is even though I prefer that the oil level be here. The fact that they're taking their time, they're, they're in taking the time to move away from simple reliance on the chart and instead actually checking the level so that we'll eventually, so that we keep the oil level from going above that um, top dot. The fact that they're doing that impresses me. And I don't want to I don't want to, what's the word I'm lose, looking for? I don't want to jeopardize the relationship um, just because on this particular oil change, they happen to go all the way up to the top dot, you know, knowing that I prefer to have it at three quarters, somewhere between halfway and three quarters, or right at three quarters for me is ideal. Um, so anyhow, I, I now, the reason why I went and I chatted all that time 
is because when I pulled this dipstick out of the tube, there had been oil on the dipstick that dragged along the tube. And what I just did by talking with the dipstick out, sitting there like that, is I gave time for any oil that had been dragged onto the dipstick tube. That ha oil has had time now, how many minutes? It's had about 15 minutes to flow back, to drain back down into the um, oil pan area. So when I push this back down and I pull it out, my oil reading is not going to be complicated by any remnant oil on that dipstick tube that this dipstick had dragged onto the tube. Um, so I just wanted to point out that there is a benefit to doing this. In my first video, um, I chatted long enough where it, it didn't become an issue. In my second video, the oil level was close to the three-quarter marks, so it was very obvious that we were at a good spot. On this video, it's super close to that top dot, so I want to be extra careful in my measurement. And that's why I took the time to chat while the dipstick was out of the dipstick tube. So now I'm going up to the F. I'm completely at, I'm completely covering the F. And let's look and see. Well, the, what you're seeing here is more like contamination. Um, that's more like the contamination that I was talking about. You see how it's only on one edge? So now let's, let's approach the dot. Okay, I've approached the dot. I've gone about midway in between the dot and you can see now that we've got some oil The oil level is like midway between the dot, midway on the dot, the top dot. Um, so even though I'd prefer for my oil level to be three quarters, like right about there, um, and instead they filled it all the way up to the top dot, maybe just a tad above the top dot, um, I'm still going to call that good enough, especially since I've got a team working there that seems to be doing everything that they can to accommodate my requests. And again, those requests um, are not typical requests, and they result in the technicians having to do a little bit extra work rather than just relying on an unmodified chart when they go and they fill the oil. So because they're taking the time and they seem to be doing it, um, I don't want to become a nuisance by complaining that you didn't fill it to three quarters, you filled it all the way up to the top dot. Um, so I'm going to call this oil change, my oil level, good enough. Um, that's it. Bye.